Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation with a parameter. We have e to the power x divided by square root of x equals a. a is a given number. And we want this equation to have one solution. So for which a values this equation is going to have one solution, that's what we're going to explore. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we want this equation to have a single solution. How do we achieve that? So in order to be able to look at this equation, because a is a parameter, which means for different values of a, you're going to get different solutions. And in some cases, you're not going to get any solutions at all. So we kind of have to find an interval or a set of values for a for which this equation will have a single solution. Obviously, there's going to be some a values for which this equation has more than one solution or maybe no solutions at all. Okay. So we're going to look at some graphs and before we get into the solution, I just want to show you real quick. There's two types of graph that we're going to be looking into. One of them is going to be the graph of f of x equals e to the power x divided by square root of x. First of all, try to think about a possible graph for this. Like what is the graph of this function going to look like? What is the domain going to be? So on and so forth. And the second thing we're going to look at is actually two functions, suppose g of x is e to the x and the h of x is a times the square root of x. So by setting these equal to each other, I'm getting both of these equations. The difference is in the second case, x can be zero. Obviously, that's not probably going to be a solution, right? Because e to the power zero cannot be zero. But with the first case, zero is not in the domain. So that's the only difference. Okay, let's let's start with the first function f of x. But again, before we do something about it, let me show you what the graph is going to look like and what the intersection is going to be look like. Okay, so here's the graph of e to the x divided by square root of x. Did you expect that? And obviously, the other one is a horizontal line. So let's go ahead and explore what is going on here. So we have this function, and obviously, to understand how it behaves, we can go ahead and differentiate it. Let's go ahead and differentiate f of x. The first derivative is going to be the quotient rule, the derivative of e to the x times square root of x, minus the derivative of square root of x, which is 1 over 2 root x, multiplied by the first function. All of that is divided by the denominator squared, which is x. And obviously, you want this to equal 0. Great. Now, let's go ahead and make a common denominator, or we can actually do multiply both sides, the top and the bottom, I mean, not the both sides, top and bottom by square root of x, because that's basically going to eliminate uh, the radical at the bottom. And we're going to get something like this. f prime is going to be x e to the x minus the square root of x can cancel out e to the x divided by 2 and all of that. Actually, I could probably just multiply by 2 square root of x. That way, we are eliminating the 2 as well. That's going to be a little bit of improvement. So we're going to get 2x e to the x minus 2 root x is going to cancel out minus e to the x divided by 2x square root of x. Now we want to set this equal to 0 because this is f prime. And then we can take out e to the x and that's going to give us 2x minus 1 divided by 2x square root of x equals 0. And from here, e to the x cannot be 0 for real values, for even complex values. It can never be 0. So this has to be 0, which means x equals 1 half is a critical point. Critical point basically means that the derivative either, you know, doesn't exist or it is equal to 0. So x equals 1 half is actually where the derivative changes from negative to positive. Because if x is less than 1 half, you're going to get a negative derivative. By the way, I forgot to mention that x needs to be greater than 0 all the time. So that's our domain, basically, for this function and also for the derivative, right? So x equals 1 half is a critical point, but how do we kind of find whether it's a maximum or minimum? In that case, you can go ahead and make a table. And in this table, you're going to have x, f prime, and f. And the only value that makes the der derivative 0 is 1 half. And you're going to look at the sign to the right of 1 half and to the left of 1 half on the number line. Think about it, because th this is the x value. If x is greater than 1 half, which is like 1 or 2, whatever, you're going to get a positive derivative, otherwise negative derivative, which means 
our function is going to be decreasing and then increasing. Haven't you seen that in the graph? Decreases and then increases, something like that, right? Which means we have a minimum at one half. Great. What is the y value? What is f of one half? So we have the minimum value at one half comma. Of course, you're gonna have to plug it in to the original equation, not the derivative, be careful about that. e to the x, which is e to the power one half divided by the square root of one half. Or you can write it as one over square root of two. And then you can kind of turn, it, turn this into, if you want, one half comma root two e, okay? So that's going to be our critical value, which is going to be super duper important. Now, what is that supposed to mean? So you can go ahead and plug these functions into Desmos, obviously, for f of x equals e to the x divided by square root of x. And for g of x, you can basically put or just y, because we already use g of x for something else. You can plug in y equals a. And of course, you need to put a slider for a, which means you can change the values of a. And then by playing with the values, you're going to notice that the horizontal line goes up and down. And at one point, as you've seen in the graph, it is tangent to our curve. And that value is where the function has a minimum. And that happens at x equals 1 half. So this is x equals 1 half. And of course, the y value here is square root of 2e, right? That's where we have a minimum value. What is that supposed to mean though? Here's what it means. When the y values are greater than that, right? Then we're going to have two solutions because our graph is gonna be intersected at two points. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this from another perspective, okay? So we have two functions that are equal or tangent. So this is tangent to this, which means if two curves are tangent, that means they're going to have the same value. So suppose they intersect at x sub 0, right? Let's go ahead and replace x with x sub 0. It's going to give you this equation, right? And then we're going to go ahead and differentiate it. But one of the things that you can do is you can kind of write this as follows. You can say, hey, I want g to be square e to the x and h to be a times the square root of x. And now look at the tangency from that perspective. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're going to get the following. If these two curves are tangent, then uh, they are going to have the same value at some point, right? And then derivatives are going to have the same point because what happens is when the curve, two curves are tangent, they have the same, ta same tangent line. So the derivatives are going to be equal at that point too. So g prime actually is e to the x, and h prime is going to be a over 2 square root of x, as you know from the derivative of square root of x. If you replace x with x sub 0 again, you're going to get another equation, which you can basically use because we have the same thing on the left-hand side. Therefore, we can go ahead and set these equal to each other, and the a's are going to cancel out, right? So here's what happens. A cancels out because we know A does not equal zero. What happens if A is equal to zero? You're gonna get the x-axis, but we know it's not a solution. From here, we get two x sub zero equals one and x sub zero equals one half. That is where they are tangent. So for different values of A, we're going to be getting uh, two solutions. But since we do want a single solution, basically for A equals, and by the way, this is supposed to be the y value, right? A is going to be square root of 2e. So for this one, we're going to have a single solution, okay? Or one solution. Let me go ahead and show you the second graph, and that'll hopefully make more sense. Now, we talked about this already. This is e to the x over square root of x with uh, y equals a. And then this is the graph of, you know, y equals e to the x and y equals a times the square root of x. And again, they intersect at x equals 1 half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.